So recently I watched a film on Netflix called Polar. This is a film that I've seen scrolling through Netflix but have never decided to check out because I've heard that it wasn't very good. This movie stars Mads Mikkelsen, uh, Mads Mikkelsen or Mads Mikkelsen. I think it's it's actually Mads Mikkelsen. I'm not I'm not too sure. I'm probably just going to call him Mads the entire video, so forgive me if I'm butchering his name that only has four letters in it. Mads Mikkelsen is probably one of my favorite actors working today. He is the star of one of my favorite films uh, called The Hunt, which is a 2012 Danish film that's directed by Thomas Vinterberg, who also recently did Another Round, which also has Mads Mikkelsen in it. This film is not to be confused with the 2020 film, also titled The Hunt, which is about the like political violence comedy whatever thing that wasn't very good go check out the 2012 film it is much better but keeping Mads Mikkelsen in mind this is the only thing about this film that was sort of making me drawn to even possibly watching it like I said before but really I didn't know much about this film all I knew is that it wasn't really well received and it must be like some kind of action thriller movie starring Mads Mikkelsen Apparently this film is based off of a comic book series or a webcomic series about this character named the Black Kaiser, who in the film is played by Mads Mikkelsen. I haven't read any of the material or gone through it at all, but I've looked at a few images on Google and have learned that the comic is popular in part because it doesn't have any dialogue or speech bubbles in it. And I feel like that's a pretty compelling way to tell a story in that sort of medium, especially one that relies so heavily on the visual aspects of storytelling. And I think it'd be an interesting idea to explore that kind of concept in a feature-length film. I think something like that could work. Unfortunately, however, this movie doesn't really take that same approach in terms of the storytelling. In fact, it makes a lot of decisions that I don't think really help it out in any way, shape, or form. So I decided to watch this film. Uh, against the better judgment of online reviewers and I have to say it was pretty bad. I'll go into a bit more of why I don't like this film and then I'll go into spoiler territory. I'll put a timestamp up just in case you want to hear my thoughts including spoilers so just throwing that out there. Visually, this film is very ugly. I didn't see any footage or watch any trailers of this film before I went into it, so I really didn't know what to expect in terms of the cinematography, the visual style, the sort of art direction that it was kind of going for, the production value, and I have to say that visually this film is very ugly. This film feels like a sort of straight-to-DVD sort of thing that you'd find in a five dollar Walmart bargain bin not even five dollars really just one dollar and it kind of reminds me of a lot of the Bruce Willis movies that have come out within the past five years that are just very schlocky very low effort very unenthusiastic with no passion behind it whatsoever the cinematography and the shooting style of this film feels very similar to that sort of thing and I'm wondering how far this movie would have gone if it didn't get a straight to Netflix deal the characters aside from Mads Mikkelsen's character kind of are all really either annoying or don't have a personality whatsoever. I really didn't like the main villain of this film, played by Matt Lucas. Oh, shit. I thought that he was the most poorly written, badly acted character in the entire film. Anytime he showed up on screen, I audibly groaned because of how painful of a performance this was for me to sit through. It really just felt like amateur acting, and I don't know if it's mostly him to blame, or if it's the direction to blame, or the character's writing. Personally, I think it's a combination of all three, but his character was just so bad, and he might even be one of the worst characters I've seen in a movie in a long time. Not since Lonnie from Gentleman Broncos. Fuck you, Lonnie. And then all the other characters are pretty one-note. They really don't have too much dimension to them. Mads Mikkelsen's character is kind of the standard cookie cutter retiring assassin type who's clearly haunted by something and is very reserved but you know he kicks a lot of ass so people are just drawn to him that way something we've seen a million times before in movies that are much better than this Vanessa Hutchins is pretty one note until 
a certain plot beat kicks in towards the end of the film, which I will get into later. Her character was mostly just somebody who was kind of a klutz and was very nervous and full of anxiety, and there really wasn't much past that. The supporting gang of the young assassins in this film all felt way too cheesy and really over the top for the sort of dramatic beats they were going for in some of this movie. There are scenes where you're supposed to take it seriously and Mads Mikkelsen and Vanessa Hudgens are having this interaction and it's supposed to be this quaint, kind of dramatic, supposed to take it seriously moment and then it would cut from that to scenes with the young assassins and they would just be doing some dumb fucking shit that I didn't care about and was way too gratuitous. The music in this was really bad. This is probably one of the few movies where I really noticed how bad the music was, and I looked it up later and apparently Dead Mouse was responsible for the music composition in this film. I've never listened to a Dead Mouse song. I'm not interested in listening to a Dead Mouse song, and because of this film, I probably never will listen to a Dead Mouse song. So thank you, Polar. Thank you, Jonas Ackerland. The violence in this film was way too gratuitous and over the top. It felt like it didn't have a point throughout most of this film. There are scenes where a character is being tortured and it doesn't feel like it has any purpose or through line. It just feels like it's there for the sake of making the audience members cringe while they're watching somebody get tortured. Plus on top of that, the visual effects for the violence don't look really good, like the blood splatters look fake as shit, everything looks like it's really cheaply made. If it was a little more realistic looking, I might give it kind of a pass, but the fact that it just looks so bad, I can't brush past it. The writing in this film is very atrocious. A lot of the dialogue just feels like it's something that I would have thought of being cool when I was 13 years old. You are at a dead end. The road that you've chosen doesn't have a rainbow. This film is interesting to me in not only because of how bad it is, but because of how much I probably would have liked this film if I was 12 to 13 years old. This is the type of movie that I think would have been cool as shit if I were a young teenage adolescent little little man boy thing and that's kind of what this movie feels like a lot of times it feels like this sort of edgy teenager revenge fantasy that is playing out in this person's head and is now being played in front of us on screen and it feels like there are these sort of ideas that kind of seem cool on paper but aren't executed very well you know Mads Mikkelsen has an eye patch and then there's a scene where he has this like cool hallway fight that I think is supposed to be reminiscent of hallway fights that we've seen in films in the past, maybe sort of trying to pay homage to that, but failing at it spectacularly. There's a scene that involves uh, Mads Mikkelsen's character wearing gloves, and he uses them to hook up these machine guns to them, and he kind of controls them remotely through the gloves, and I guess that's kind of a cool idea in concept, but they only use it once and they don't really go much anywhere else with it. It's just sort of introduced into the film and then thrown away. Like I was saying before with the idea of a story like this having no dialogue and just purely being told through visual storytelling and through the actions that the characters take that you can see on screen, I feel like that concept could work but they decide not to do that. Of course, this film has characters talking, and because of it, the dialogue is just so laughably bad. I think now I'm going to get into spoiler territory. I'm just gonna run through the plot as quickly as I can, just so you can kind of get an idea of what exactly I'm talking about. So, uh, spoiler warning, if uh, you don't want this movie spoiled for you, um, although why would you care? This film is garbage. So the movie starts off with Johnny Knoxville uh, dying mid-blowjob. So I guess kind of sets the, the tone for the whole fucking thing. And then it cuts to Mads Mikkelsen's character who is about to turn 50. And when they turn 50 in his profession, that means he gets to retire with a pension. And he's going to have $8 million to his name once he, once he retires. But his boss, who's played by Matt Lucas, is like, no, 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 I can't have that. Because how I make money is that my employees retire 
and then they they die right before retirement and there's a contract in their clause that states that if they die before retirement that the company gets all the pension money and that's that's how i keep the floating business baby there's nothing illogical or brain dead about that plan there's not going to be any repercussions for that later so then basically mads mickelson goes to this remote cabin in the i think montana mountains or whatever like he he goes and lives in this snowy area it's part of why it's called polar i guess and his neighbor is vanessa hudgens who he sort of forms a bond with throughout the film then meanwhile he's being haunted by these visions of something that went wrong like a hit that went wrong in his past and it like keeps coming up throughout the film and you can tell it's supposed to have some sort of importance later as that's happening there are also these young assassins who are introduced at the beginning of the film when Giant Knoxville dies mid-blowjob. And their whole plot is basically they have to go and find where Mads Mikkelsen is for Matt Lucas so that they can kill him and he won't get his pension, obviously because he's dead. And then Matt Lucas will get his pension and then his company will be even more rich than it was before. Quick time out. I feel like with that logic, wouldn't the assassins that are already a part of his quote unquote business, wouldn't they get suspicious that all their colleagues are dying before? Or they retire and the fact that the company is like getting all that money from them I mean it's in the contract that they sign according to the movie's own dialogue so they must know that the money goes directly to the company when they pass away and if there's a suspicious amount of people that pass away then why don't they figure that out for themselves and kind of rebel against this guy I mean they have to know that they're gonna be next once they become a retirement age on the chopping block, right? You'd think it'd be in their best interest to make sure that they don't die before they're 50 and that they do receive all their money. Sort of an illogical thing that I thought of just now, so I'm throwing it in there. Anyway, all this is happening. Um, Mads Mikkelsen and Vanessa Hudgens are forming sort of like this father-daughter pseudo-relationship. And then meanwhile, the, the young guns finally find out where Mads Mikkelsen is. They sort of attempt to attack him, but he basically kills every single one of them but one, and the one that he doesn't kill ends up kidnapping Vanessa Hudgens. So then he goes to this place in the city to find an old friend to maybe get the whereabouts of Matt Lucas, but then the friend betrays him, and so also the friend never comes back into the movie ever again. Like, he's just kind of forgotten about. And then Matt Lucas, he basically tells him that Vanessa Hudgens is gonna be his new girlfriend now or whatever, and they're pumping her full of hair Heroin, which has no effect on her later in the film by the way like she never has any withdrawal symptoms from shooting up all this heroin being forced into her so then Mads Mikkelsen is told that he's gonna be tortured for four days and then Matt Lucas is gonna kill him before his 50th birthday so that Matt Lucas still gets the pension money which I mean why would you why not just kill him and get the money anyway I mean I know you want retribution but it's just I don't know doesn't make much sense to me anyway movie villain logic so then you see the torture process throughout the film for those four days it lasts for like five minutes it feels like and it's just really over the top gruesome and gratuitous and it feels like it's way too heavy handed and trying to be edgy also i forgot to mention that this film has a lot of gratuitous sex in it and there are just a lot of naked women and the fact that you don't even get to see Mads Mikkelsen's penis in this film is a crime against humanity. You don't get to see his little Mikkelsen. Anyway, uh, it ends up being that Mads Mikkelsen escapes. He winds up murdering all of Matt Lucas's guards, and then he finally kills Matt Lucas himself. Thank God. He was insufferable in this film. I couldn't wait. And then he finds Vanessa Hutchins and brings her back to her cabin and then I guess it turns out that the visions that Mads Mikkelsen was having earlier of like a hit job gone wrong and him accidentally killing the wrong people apparently that was her family and he let her live through it back in the day when he was a younger assassin and she was just a little girl and then she never forgot and ended up tracking him down this whole time so that she could confront him about it and ask him why he did it and then he said it was bad intel wrong target and then she pretty much just forgives him there and then and then and they're like, what do we do now? And he's like, I don't fucking know. And then the movie ends. Let's compare this film to a film that I really love that is sort of of the same genre, John Wick. There's a lot of similar concepts in both of these movies. An ex-hitman that is retiring who just wants to live a peaceful life when all of a sudden he's forced to kind of confront 
elements of his past organizations and through that the plot is moved forward. It's an action film. It's supposed to have this kind of stylistic approach and sort of this weighty tone to it. Other than the concepts though and the ideas that it brings forward, these are two vastly different films. The action in John Wick is very consistently good and very well choreographed throughout most of the entire film. You can clearly tell that each set and each plot point is sort of an excuse to get to the next action scene which is what the point of the film is but it also helps that the character and the story is something that you can get behind and something that you care about. You care about the fact that Keanu Reeves is out for revenge because of what they did to his dog. You care about the fact that he's somebody who wanted to seek solitude but then was forced to be pulled back in because of some random happenstance. This film isn't trying to be too convoluted or too up its own ass in any way. The dialogue is served basically to build up Keanu Reeves's John Wick character and through that you get a sense of who he is and what he was and how much of a force he is to be reckoned with. And from there the movie just sort of goes into a barrage of action scenes that are carried forward and that are believable because one, you believe Keanu Reeves as this action star who is taking down all these guys and who is actually displaying the skills on screen. And two, you're given that previous information of the fact that John Wick is a name that is whispered in the corners of this assassin world because he's so feared and respected by the people in it. It has a consistent tone that stays throughout the entire film and it matches the quality of the filmmaking very well. With Polar, it felt like it was very inconsistent in what it wanted to be. It felt like it wanted to be both a sort of dramatic look at this assassin type character like a John Wick film but then at the same time it would have these scenes of these young assassins going around being way too goofy and gratuitous and almost felt like it was trying to be an even edgier Quentin Tarantino film but it just couldn't quite figure out what makes a Quentin Tarantino film so special. It just watched Inglorious Bastards and thought to itself that the best parts of those films were the violence and the blood. When really those films have smart dialogue and good acting and good writing behind them to support the ridiculous violence that is in each of his films. Whereas this one, the humor doesn't land, the dialogue is very cringeworthy, and the writing is just really bad. When there are so many elements of a film like that that drag it down that bad, any element that might be elevated because of good qualities in a movie like John Wick are just immediately forgotten about because of how bad the other elements of this film are. The action in this film is very inconsistent. It really only has one notable action scene that I thought was kind of okay, which is the hallway fight scene that Mads Mikkelsen is involved in with all of those guards. But again, it feels like it's trying to pay homage to hallway fight scenes in other action films that I feel like are done significantly better, like The Raid or Old Boy, or even the Daredevil fight fight scene in the first season of Daredevil episode 2. I guess if I had to touch on another thing that I liked about this movie is that I didn't think Mads Mikkelsen was terrible. Honestly, he's the best actor in this film by far. He outclasses every single person in this movie and it clearly shows just how good of an actor he is if he is able to be the standout in this film and sort of rise above all the shit and sort of separate himself and label himself as something that's in this film that is not absolute garbage. Obviously this makes me respect him as an actor even more because if he's able to take a movie like this and sort of do his best with the cringy dialogue and with the writing of his character and with the scenes that play out in this film then I think he deserves a lot of credit. Still though this movie was a steaming pile of shit and I'll be glad that I never have to see this again. This movie was trying to be too much like John Wick but it didn't include any of the things that made John Wick special special or stand out. This movie didn't feel unique. This movie didn't feel like it had passion behind it. This honestly felt like bargain bin quality. And I think the most value you would ever get out of it is laughing at how bad it is. If you want a great Mads Mikkelsen performance in a movie that is fantastic, I suggest watching The Hunt from 2012, Another Round, or Pusher 2, directed by Nicholas Winding Refn. On top of a countless amount of other great performances from Mads Mikkelsen. So yeah, Polar, 2 out of 10. See ya.